I've summoned every neon sign that I own and have placed them in a circular seance around me so as to protect me from the divine unholy that is the TikTok taste in music. Hey neighbor, welcome back to Dumpster Diving. My name is John, and today we're sifting through the wreckage known as TikTok's terrible taste in music. In less than a decade, being chronically online became so normalized and almost desired, we went from lip syncing on Musical.ly to dancing on the dance bite owned TikTok to full-on choreographed routines that disrupt the general public. How can you not love it? Before we get too deep into this, I wanna say that I'm not a TikTok user, and if I play my cards right, I never will be. But I do wanna acknowledge that I'm talking more so about the generalized, I listen to anything that pops up on my For You page and assume it's the best thing ever type of user, not the more niche communities that have blown up some great songs and artists. Yeah, of course it's been exciting to see bands like Ghost, Beach Weather, Lorna Shore, Mon skin, getting probably more exposure than they ever would have in the age of social media had TikTok not existed. It's even brought back some of the classics. I mean, Fleetwood Mac, Dreams, we all remember the dude on the skateboard. But it's not just about that. I want you to think about it and say, yes, we've had those positives, but then look over at the music charts and ask yourself, at what cost? Songs are getting shorter, attention spans are microdosing, and I don't know what to do with myself because they're just losing entire parts of songs. Where is the bridge. TikTok was originally formed as a video sharing app that allowed vertical videos up to 60 seconds. But now the app allows longer content. First it was three minutes, now up to 10 minutes. But the viral moments normally come from very short sounds that are less than 15 seconds, with many of them being under 10. No one could have predicted the rate at which TikTok would consume the entire world and make us so glued to our screens that we can't even pay attention for longer than 15 seconds. We hear the chorus, and we have to move on to something else or else play that chorus 8,000 times as we watch every single video under the sound. The terrible TikTok taste in music comes in because of all of the sped up, slowed and reverb, bastardized versions of songs that aren't even really the songs themselves, that get so many views and so much attention because TikTok's attention span taste in music is so terrible that those versions often blow up more than the original song and people say that that's the definitive version. TikTok's obsession with taking a hit song or even a smaller song and then speeding it up so as to add new life. It's as though they think it's some cutting edge new thing where it's revolutionizing the sound if you've been on the internet long enough, then you know that Nightcore's been a thing for decades, right? As someone who generally tends to gravitate towards the original version of a song, not even remixes, let alone a sped up remix, this is not normally for me, but I can admit that there is some Nightcore that I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty good. But with TikTok, it's all about that 10 to 15 second slot where you're trying to grab someone's attention. So you speed it up really, really fast, and it often sounds like a bunch of rubbish coming through the speaker, but it doesn't matter if it sounds ironic or funny, I guess it lands. Let me tell you people, this is confusing record labels. And part of me loves that because the record label is always the most out of touch. It's like an award show where they're trying to use hip lingo to stay up with what the kids are talking about. How do you do, fellow kids? There's Spotify bootlegs popping up of these sped up versions, which is causing the label in turn to have to scramble and remake the original version and then speed it up or add slowed and reverb, whatever it might be. They're trying to release it, so you'll see like eight different versions of one song in some sort of bastardized EP on Spotify. Record labels and even the artist or band themselves are very confused because they're like, am I supposed to try and cater to everybody so I have to make 18 versions of this song or this album? Don't even get me started on Slowed and Reverb. I made an entire video on it. There's a card on screen if you want to check that out. But essentially what it boils down to is a lot of people find it more moody and atmospheric to take a song and had just some traces of reverb, a little bit of echo in the room. I feel that there's something about the original version of a song that just, it's what the artist intended for you to hear, 
and when you don't respect that, it just feels like a bit of a middle finger, even if it's just for fun. I think back to a clip from 2012 when Gautier, somebody that I used to know, remember that song? It was blowing up everywhere, and a radio station excitedly told Gautier that they were playing like a sped up club version of the song, and Gautier said, yeah, can you kind of stop doing that now? A little bit lost for words. That's what I'm getting at when I say that the artist and the label, they're all confused because this is happening so fast. The the internet is moving at light speed, quite literally, and they just don't know what to do, so they're throwing shit at the wall and seeing if it sticks. I'm begging, begging you to put your love in the hand out, baby. The app is unintentionally creating hordes of fake fans that know like one or two song clips for an artist that they may or may not be able to recognize by name, but oh yeah, that Bad Habits track goes off. Imagine a hairdryer being held to a giant body of water. Slowly but surely we're evaporating, drying up every last morsel of our attention span by consuming media and music on TikTok. Obviously, this is not everyone. There's a lot of people who will hear a snippet of a song and they'll say, I'm gonna go look that up for myself. And I think a lot of people that watch my videos, that's exactly what you know to do because I've trained you to be that way. I'm like, I'm giving my opinion. Yes, maybe I played a snippet, but go check it out for yourself. I get so frustrated when the shitty TikTok remix version blows up even bigger than the original song, which is in and of itself just something that I don't agree with. But outside of that, I feel like the fans are going to concerts looking for the 15 second snippet or the remix or whatever they heard. And if they're not getting that, then they're just sitting around on their phone being rude and distracting others at the show. Steve Lacey is a big name that comes to mind because there's been some frustration around him saying that TikTok has ruined him. And obviously he was in his band, The Internet. He's had a lot of acclaim working with Vampire Weekend and others before this. But 2022 was really his huge year. Fast forward after tracks like Dark Red, Bad Habits, and more are blowing up on TikTok and other social media, and Steve Lacey is going out on tour, and fans aren't exactly having the positive reception live that he was probably expecting. In fact, a lot of people are only there for the I wish I knew. I'm gonna issue a challenge here, and I would love to hear the results if you actually try this. Next time you go to a concert for a band or an artist that you found through social media, I want you to try and keep your phone usage to a minimum. Maybe just take a few photos, a few quick clips, but then put it in your pocket. Instead of living the experience vicariously through a screen, even though you're actually there. I'm sorry if this video came across high horsey or preachy or whatever you want to label it as. I do have strong feelings against TikTok and also the music taste thereof, but I recognize that there is good out there. So I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What do you think about TikTok's taste in music? There's some of my recent videos on screen. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for the love of music, and I'll see you soon for more on Beyond AR TV.